How many? <laughs> One, two. No, no. Don't. <laughs> what? Just give me like three, two. What's wrong with starting at five? Should I start at three? <laughs> right. Dude, you guys are not letting Scott do this. You're just rolling. All right, that's it. All right, ready? <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Ooh, welcome to Plot Channel Overwatch episode 121. <laughs> The emergency episode that we uh, we had to do because we missed some of the biggest news in uh, in not only Overwatch history but gaming history because it's uh, yeah I mean we're talking about the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard which is I think it's, it's the... really an emergency episode though like we're we like three days late if we were a sponder friend they'd be dead by now <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah well I mean, it's emergency it enough. It is. It's a. It's a late Sorry, emergency yeah. episode. But we didn't. We didn't do one last week because we were doing the top ten main supports. And Scott, you'd be happy to know that you made it into the top fifteen on two of our lists. Um, yeah, I, I saw Matt also put wins at twelve, so I feel like that yes. invalidates his. I list. also had wins yes. on my list alongside you. Okay, so, yes. so really, I was, was on no wins. list. <laughs> Scott, I mean, I, I, I you know, great, great I, player when you're playing, but wins is on the list for those. So I'm just putting it out there. That there's some wild <laughs> shit going down. Anyway, we uh, let's talk about the big news. Let's just jump straight back into it. Uh, Microsoft to buy Activision Blizzard King. Uh, got to include the King part as well because it's going to be a large portion of what we're talking about when it comes to this as well. But uh, some of the biggest news came out of almost nowhere. I don't think anybody was really expecting this one. Um, somehow, for the first time in the history of Activision Blizzard's um, existence as an organization, they didn't leak something ahead of time. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it's it, this one was kept under wraps. But joining the uh, the Xbox teams, you can see this is a like mission statement or whatever the hell it was. Um, but uh, a ridiculously large deal. I think it still needs to be approved as well, so that there's not um, there's laws in place in the U.S. Right, in case of monopolies. Antitrust. Yeah, yes. the antitrust laws. But I feel like the U.S. government just ignores that shit these days. So it's probably well, going to go have, through. Well, they have blocked some of like recent deals in the past. I can't remember what was the most recent one they blocked. Um, but it's the, realistically, it's probably for a much more larger scale than this because Activision Blizzard King, yeah, they have a lot of properties. But they, it's not like where a lot of times when they do antitrust, it's because they don't want everyone to just own an entire market. And there's still yeah. so many other competitors. And also they don't own all the critical infrastructure right now if they were going to be like microsoft is going to buy google they'd be like okay well the fuck no <laughs> but like so yeah i think it'll i think it'll probably go through it sounds like they're very confident it's going through it's, yeah, yeah. So, so antitrust is just like monopoly kind of standard right mm -hmm. where it's like you, you can't just like own all of the things of one area so i i know that they looked into facebook for some time because they were like hey you own facebook instagram and whatsapp like at some point, like there's too many popular mobile apps you're owning here in this one space. Um, I don't think they ended up doing something about it. Um, I know that early on, like on the dot com, uh, dot com boom or whatever, Microsoft actually did buy a lot of like the biggest popular websites around. And Bill Gates, he was like on not on trial, but like he did like hearings and stuff about that, like why he purchased certain big websites, etc. So Microsoft has been here before. Uh, when it comes to purchasing um, other companies that are like sort of competing for um, what they're in the business of. But yes, yeah, like Avast said, like, do we really think that like they're going to shut this deal down? I don't, it would be I don't quite think funny enough... if they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It would be funny. It would be just extremely funny. Just announce and just would get it be shut down? down? Would it be funny? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> but I mean, I it, say it that. It would kind of be. I say that in like in a morbid sense of like, oh, it's it would be so. I don't know. Just we deserve know. better, Bren. We don't have to be in this headspace, okay? Like we can be <laughs> optimist and cheerful <laughs> about it. We don't yeah. have to look at the morbid side of things. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't really know much much more evident to, that we can really talk about with this other than moving on to talking about like what it actually means for the the whole just the entire ecosystem Activision Blizzard that we exist in as well because all of us have have been a part of it or are a part of it in some way or form. And yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting change that's come out of nowhere, but one that I'm pretty hopeful for as well. Um, and I guess we can move on to the next topic, which is the the Activision Bling uh, Blizzard King Workers Alliance basically put out a, a post saying that they remain committed to change um, within the company itself, which I think is an important note to have because a lot of people's initial reactions to this news was that it immediately meant that. Better days were coming in terms of the internal culture of the company, which isn't necessarily the case. 
um, which, I, which I think is important to keep in mind. Like the the fact that you know the the Workers Alliance is still committed to essentially change within the corporate structure from top to bottom, I think is something that's necessary and good. And uh, yeah, the, the the fight isn't over yet when it comes to this kind of work that's being done internally, um, it, despite the fact that that this acquisition is is currently being made. Yeah, it's it's one of those things of like. Obviously, this was one of the very few ways in which I think you could see major leadership changes like within mm -hmm. the company, right? And like, obviously, the big news for a lot of people who have been following the Activision Blizzard stuff is like, Bobby Kotick is probably out. I think they're signing like June 2023, right? He's going to get like yeah, a big when payday. The transition to, like, comes through. Yeah. Yeah. When he, he's going to get a big payday and leave. And like, as much as some people want him held accountable, which obviously everyone would love to see that, like, to move forward as a company, I think hopefully, like, this is a good step forward and that the culture does shift because that's like, I, I feel like it's important that Microsoft with this acquisition is already like in their statement being like, we are going to change the culture. We want to implement, you know, Xbox and Microsoft culture because, you know, they could have just like bought them for all the assets and just be like, we don't really care what's happening in the company, but like they really do. And that's, I think why everyone's really hopeful about like, you know, positive change, not just, you know, within like, you know, the culture and everything because we work there we know that people have been affected by everything that's been happening but also just like hopefully you know from a video game standpoint because you know we've all played activision blizzard games and we know the direction they've gone in the last i don't know five years and it hasn't been great yeah i mean real i mean honestly i feel for this move uh it's like you said Gusta, it's probably the only thing that is if there's one thing that could remove the the culture that is currently there, you simply have to just buy it. I, I find it funny that we recently had uh, Microsoft saying, we're going to reevaluate re our partnership with Activision <laughs> Blizzard. And it's like, by purchasing them. <laughs> so we're just going to buy them. And we're changing our relationship status. It's like saying that, like, okay, we're friends, but now we're married. So, like, that's, that's, so I do think that's, like, kind of funny in and of itself. But there's really no other way they're going to change the culture, I think, at Blizzard realistically without huge money involved because that's just how the corporate world works. Like, the reality is you need money in some direction moving either out or in to make big changes. And this is probably one of those two cho choices by just mm -hmm. getting a purchase and having an aggressive takeover and removing some of the toxic work environment and people that work there. Yeah, I mean, the way I saw this play out really is like there were two different ways this could go down uh as it relates to like bobby kodak and the current workers alliance uh strike going on i think they're still on strike as it's uh, for like weeks upon now uh but it's like one of them it's like this thing continues to linger um and eventually like the activision blizzard board is like hey bobby this thing isn't really going away uh you know maybe it's time you know you, you, you step down and maybe we do something about this but you know wh when would that have been i don't know maybe like months from now maybe like if this deal didn't go through maybe it would have been tomorrow who knows i don't have a timeline for that and the other option is like now like you know activision blizzard actually, actually got bought by microsoft um and um xbox and so those were really the two only paths forward i saw us like dealing with this and you know, I'm kind of optimistic by uh, Microsoft purchasing Activision Blizzard because if this deal goes through, Bobby Kotick, there's no official word on it that he's actually going to step away. But, you know, there's a lot of rumors that, you know, when this merger is complete, then Bobby might finally step down. And that means that Microsoft could, uh, you know, do some negotiations with the Workers Alliance and be like, hey, this is the culture we have at our current workplaces. You know, let's talk about what we can do better to improve things on the campus. Um, you know, structures, uh, what are some uh, things we can put in like your contracts to make you feel safer at work and um, make sure that things go right. So uh, w whereas, you know, one of the other options would have been like, hey, we got a new CEO or whatever, because Bobby's out and mm -hmm. now we got to figure out all this stuff internally. And that could be something that goes on for like months. Um, I understand that some people are unhappy that the fact that like Bobby is like a golden parachute now and he's going to get paid if this deal goes through, which you know, if things are true, probably he doesn't deserve, right? So, um, uh, but regardless, I feel like the, the way this went down, um, it's a good thing for the Workers Alliance because now they can actually negotiate with someone who actively wants to participate and wants to talk about this kind of stuff and wants to figure out a good culture and make things better in the workplace. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of optimistic with how this could potentially go down. Um, but, you know, there are some yeah. things that... Um, 
you know, set yourself back with Bobby in uh, this case. Um, yeah, I think you bring up some some really good points. Price you got to pay, Johnny. Honestly, like the 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 whole idea. Like, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people annoyed at the fact that it's Bobby's probably going to be getting a big payout off the back of this and this, that, and the other. But the reality is that if the good work wasn't being put in by the Workers Alliance and there wasn't the obviously all of these issues being brought to light in the first place. I doubt that this deal would even have been on the table for Microsoft. Like, I don't think the Microsoft would even have an opportunity to buy the uh, the company. It's only because Bobby Kotick has been put into hot water and Activision Blizzard and the surrounding culture of it as well and how the company, essentially, everything has been put into question recently that I think that this deal was even something that was put on the table in the first place. And it just so happens that Microsoft is in... They've been in a bit of a buying mood. They've been trying to basically acquire stuff. I mean, essentially for years and years and years, but it's in the gaming space in particular as well, they've been trying to acquire tons of different things like Discord. Um, there was something else that fell through for them as well recently. They but have this so is a, many game studios. Yeah, it's yeah kind of a insane. lot of game studios. Um, but overall, this, this, yeah, I think you bring up a great point is that like not the best circumstances if Bobby Kotick were to leave in, in the circumstances here, but it does mean now that the handoff is going to be handled elegantly. There's going to be Microsoft's overseeing all of this, and they seem on board with the idea of committing to to change within the company, at least. Um, so, I mean, yeah, look at everything. There were some additional own. cons with it, you know, and p people have pointed this out on Twitter that, like, wh when mergers happen, like, who gets a certain role, right? You Because usually, like, yeah. you have someone in charge of something, and then Xbox and Microsoft, they come in with it, like, wait, well, we already have, like, an employee doing this work. And so, like, who out of the two members like get this role? Are there going to be layoffs? There are going to be a lot of questions and like some cons that come with this merger as well. Um, but given that like the Workers Alliance is doing such good work, I'm hoping that they can come out on quote unquote the winning side of this uh, and actually you know deal with some pretty reasonable terms with Microsoft if this merger goes through. Yeah, it, it was. It was interesting because there was like a little bit of like back and forth because, you know, obviously we're already starting to see like Bobby versus like, I guess, Activision Blizzard going on with like uh, Bobby came out on an article and said that like he thinks that the reason that the stock price has been so low is because of all the delay of games, because of everything that's been going on, like, you know, company Lamar. side, like with the games. And he's saying like, oh, yeah, it has nothing really to do with like, you know, my misconduct or anything like that when really, you know, if you just like put everything together, I think the sexual misconduct, at least like business side has been the most forward facing. Like you think a lot of these, you know, like Wall Street or these like businesses give a shit that like World of Warcraft sucks right now. Like not really, like there's a lot of like issues, like very public issues that have been going on with Bobby Kotick. And he's kind of like trying to shift blame right now. And yeah, this is the article. Well, that, uh, yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all tied in together. The, yeah. the idea of these games being delayed, why do you think they're delayed in the first place? It's because of worker turnover. People are leaving the company because there's no change happening internally. Like, it's all tied together. The fact that he's saying this is a bit of a scapegoat. He's trying to create a, a legacy, it seems like, before his exit. But it's, it really does fall upon him and, and the mistakes he's made in terms of managing this company and the uh, whatever approach that he's gone for here. And this is a, a series of tweets here by an, an Overwatch dev. Um, uh, I don't know if Tracy still works for the company or not. I think um, she does, yeah. I believe yeah, she's still, still works, a producer. Still works for yeah. a producer for on Overwatch. Um, and she she basically just came out swinging, man. She's dragging Bobby, you know. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting here. Yeah. If we scroll up to the initial tweet as well, where she was saying, um, basically, Bobby's telling the Overwatch dev team to work on random projects. They would be doing overtime and then the projects would get cancelled and months of Overwatch 2 dev time would have been lost. I'm just, I'm just putting in the, the word time there. Um, and entire teams and turning over and signing him as the reason. Which, yeah, again, just shining a light on the, some of the actual reasonings as to why some of these games might be delayed. It's because of poor management internally and not actually handling a lot of the issues that have been brought up whatsoever. Instead of them ignoring them, actively hiding the issues as well, away from, I believe, the board of directors. Is that it? The board of directors? Yeah. Yeah. Like that it, uh, earlier sexual misconduct. Of, yeah. It's, uh, it's absurd. I mean, his own mistakes really leading to the demise of all of this. So it's... Um, it's a good thing, honestly, that Bobby's leaving. I will say that, regardless of the circumstances, even if he gets a big payout. Listen, I, I, I'm de developing a bit of 
you know, like the uh, the dissociation with it, where I'm just like, fucking, we just live in a society where billionaires oh. are not going to be punished. Like, yeah, yeah just, just it's <laughs> That's acceptance kind of the vibe at this I'm point. On. I'm like, oh, fuck the world, you know, it's like, yeah. how it is, you know, it's, but I, I will say as well, like, if people are, you know, uh, not scared, <laughs> but like, if they're, a vast <laughs> trying to fix myself <laughs> it happened to johnny earlier and didn't happen to me so i just wanted yeah. to make it. i was living in a society in that moment um, yeah but but i wanted to say like if people are like um worried about the hesitancy from activision and microsoft committing to say that bobby will definitely leave once the merger is complete it's not because like they're gonna like debate you and just be like oh yeah the merger is complete and Bobby's staying! Like, that's not <laughs> the reason why they're so hesitant to say it. It's probably because if the antitrust laws actually block this merger, and Bobby is like, yeah, I'm committed to leaving if the merger goes uh, through, and then it doesn't happen, well, then Bobby's left there just like, well, it doesn't happen, and I'm still CEO, I guess. Like, for him, like, politically, or like, you know, um, being in charge of the company, like, that doesn't make sense, and that's probably the main reason. I would speculate anyway, as, you know, someone who's never really been in charge of running a company or know anything about it. That's probably the reason I would think why they're so hesitant to go through with it. Um, it's because that would leave Bobby in a very uncertain uh, position if the merger were to be blocked and he had committed to leaving. Um, and, you know, so that that's kind of why I could see them not committing to uh, saying Bobby would leave. But it would make sense. Um, also a huge big. amount of his compensation package like they listed out like the various terms of his contract of like how much money he gets in various situations there could be stipulations that depending on his own actions or words could affect his payout uh so like you have to think mm -hmm. about like the, all the ways that corporate lawyers like when you're working with the amount of money that we're talking about which is like the estimated amount i think if he got his like his best amount essentially it was like 370 million dollars or something yeah. Um, it's a huge sum of money. So when you're working with that much money, I'm sure it's also best to just shut the fuck up and just like just let it happen because like you never know what you could say could potentially affect the outcome and like how like the other party could use that against you or things like that when you're working with this amount of money because I'm sure as hell they don't want to pay out $370 million. Uh, so well, it's like pretty big there, I think. It's it's also a big thing of it's not like he, they're just like giving him three hundred and seventy million as well. Like I don't understand like business or like any of this like stock option stuff or whatever. But like he has been like the CEO of the company for like thirty years. This is like accrued over a very long time, and this is like kind of his exit. So it's like I don't think you can avoid this kind of payout. There's no like oh we no, want Bobby to go down the, without it. Other like so the, there was like four different packages listed that someone had posted. I wish I had the article on hand of what it should be yeah. like. Essentially, his his compensation for like his golden parachute could be as low depending on like if he was fired like for cause, essentially, like if he was removed from the company for a reason, uh, which is pretty standard for a lot of contracts. Like you have a different for cause and then a not for cause like reason yeah. for exiting a contract. He would get he would still get a lot of money, but it was like thirty million dollars. Oh, really? I didn't think so, it would, that as was opposed the variance, right? to like if he was removed like for for like a I think the specific thing for the like the three hundred something million was like a corporate takeover where they then removed him. It was like an a ridiculous amount of money, like the three hundred plus million. Like I wish I could find the actual two hundred ninety three uh, million. Oh, there it is. Oh. Yeah. Um so that's that's kind of like I feel like these situations where if there's something like this happening, there's probably a reason for him to be quiet as well for just a financial reason for himself to like prevent any sort of issues with him potentially getting his compensation package. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also uh, the, um, sorry, Ben. Yeah, no, go ahead. The, the um, like it says there, like, uh, the, the deal is, it's, it's expected to close until Microsoft next fiscal year, which ends in mid 2023, which is like, you know, that's like 15, 16 months away so you know we're, we're long away from this story being over and bobby kovic's role in it and you know uh what it's actually going to look like once the merger is finally complete i mean the lawsuit has been out for like or uh, the lawsuit was filed like six months ago five and a half months ago or something like that right and we got 15 more months to go so this story is far from over so we, we can't really make any assessments of yeah codex pay out if this merger is to go complete because like we we don't know how this is going to develop from here yeah still early i days. also wonder too you know we didn't talk about it too much but isn't it ridiculous like heinously ridiculous that 
the CEO of this huge multi-billion dollar company was literally day-to-day -day overseeing a dev team of one of his games and telling them what to do. Is that, that not is, like an inherently ridiculous statement? That is ridiculous, yeah. I mean, that is absolutely absurd. And also, I just don't understand the justification and reasoning for it. Like, what, yeah. what reasoning would you have to even be hands-on in that capacity? And also, yeah, yeah I mean, I just, it, it would do no good. It's like you're actively trying to sabotage the company internally. Like, I mean, you're just bored, right? Like, if, you, if, you, if your net worth is like a billion dollars, like, you're probably <laughs> bored and you're just like... I bet it's just a gaming company. I guess you just stroll around the campus, you know? Like we see I think some of the sports control. team owners, like, they're just like, hey, uh, you know, I, I, I made my living through, you know, doing internet shit in, like, 2001, and now I'm going to go into the NBA and just tell them how it is. I'm going to tell them how the basket player do their things and tell them what players to get, you know? Because yeah. I guess that's what billionaires do but i, I feel mean, like that's not a board it, thing that's just a control freak thing i think it's I mean, legitimately have seen, they just have, have, they have to be in charge the quotes that came out about bobby goddick the man is a sociopath like yeah. he literally said over the phone to somebody i will end you the man is tapped he's he's gone like it, it doesn't surprise me that he's he's so hard, hands on about it maybe but... board was a terrible charity <laughs> yeah. i think he, i think he just is a control freak and is like dude these stupid devs they we need to add something else because i know it because i'm bobby yeah. kodak i know what's best yeah it's uh let's let's move on to talking about the the meat and potatoes of this weird episode that we've done that's yeah, it's uh, how is it going to be affecting Overwatch 2 and the Overwatch League is a big question for us because this is what the podcast centered around Overwatch. Um, and that's the question on all of Sometimes. our minds. Uh, I'll, I'll sub like the context of this as well is that when Microsoft were looking to buy Activision Blizzard King, the big reason for it, I think the number one when it comes to the actual the gaming content comes from the King side of the company, which is the mobile game sector. Microsoft suck when it comes to breaking into the mobile game sector the mobile sector like they they have historically been terrible at it and so this is a big acquisition for them to essentially enter that gaming market and i think in articles they've said that basically it's just going to give them so you can see actually the headline underneath the sorry underneath the headline um the video game industry's greatest market is mobile. Microsoft aspires to fight against Android and Apple. They're trying to skirt around and find basically more ways that they can get around the app store fees you know trying to skirt around some of these uh, some of the fees in the app store and whatnot and they're, do they're trying to do this by basically getting games that are big enough and develop games that will be big enough that people will go out of their way to um, download them not through the app store um and yeah and, and another big reason as well that was quoted is of course the xbox cloud gaming like the xbox game pass as well anything to add more titles to the xbox game pass they've been heavily 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 pushing um that as a concept like the subscription model where you get games um whatever is on a monthly basis um which they see as the future of gaming um at this point as well and it makes complete sense why they'd want to acquire as many studios as possible to try and essentially make that an attractive option um, in the first place. So uh, that begs the question as well, how will this affect Overwatch 2 and OWL? Because on the surface, it seems like all of their focus comes directly opposite of anything involving esports, because let's face it, esports is a very, very small chunk of the pie when it comes to the larger gaming world. And um, for Overwatch 2 as well, obviously it's gonna, they're going to be eyeing up the Overwatch IP quite nicely. Um, but it's it, from my mind i don't think it's going to be affecting either of these two things too much i don't know if you guys have a differing of opinions i i i kind of like agree with you bren like i don't think they're going to come in and just start like willy-nilly like axing everything like the only thing that i could ever see them like that would like heavily affect us would be them coming in and just being like this league is like not financially viable or like because we've seen so many iterations of the league at this point like so many different yeah. looks like maybe for overwatch 2 when they come in like there is a massive change to the format of how, how the league functions maybe they'll also come in and they just don't care and it'll just keep running as it is and like business as usual so like it, i'm cautiously optimistic as you said like i'm i feel like this acquisition as long as they're not coming into like control too much it should hopefully be a good thing for us uh maybe we'll get more budget maybe we won't maybe we'll get anything like it's so early for anything to really know if it's going to be net positive um for me the funny thing like game related that like a lot of people have brought up that like is realistic is like 
is it going to be exclusive from away from the PlayStation because mm. of Xbox? Are they going to not allow Overwatch 2 on PlayStation? I'm like, probably not, right? Like you would doubt they well, would. I think they would run into issues with that because they promised that Overwatch 2 would be, if you owned Overwatch 1, you could play the PvP and it would all be ported to Overwatch 2. Yeah. So unless they, meant, unless they made it so that you couldn't purchase Overwatch 2 on a PS5 or PS4 or whatever, I don't think that would be the case because also you've got to think about the development time of where all the developers have been working on making sure it works on the PlayStation systems this entire time. You're just going to throw out a development time. I mean, there's precedent for it, apparently, where the devs will be working on projects and throwing away their time. So maybe, <laughs> I, I don't know. Again, I feel like, you know, if the merger is to be com complete roughly around like the mid-year of 2023, I don't think you can like develop with the expectation that it's not going to be on PlayStation. Yeah. Like, I, I think the Overwatch development team are like, well, or well, even the higher ups, you know, in the higher ups of the team itself, it's like, we have to develop Overwatch 2 with the philosophy that, like, it's still going on to PlayStation because we don't know if this merger is going through. We don't know the philosophies of Microsoft and Activision. And so I, 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 I don't really see that happening it being exclusive to xbox and not being on playstation because like we're so far away um that i i don't really see that as a viable approach for the development team yeah you see kurt highlighting that it's not a competitor to nintendo or sony which obviously like that's their stated purpose is to not be like a competitor with this acquisition but obviously who knows right there's you can never really know what's going to happen until it happens right there's like a million things of people reversing course on all sorts of things there's you know like if you've ever there's a couple games of mine that i've bat that or i know friends that have backed on kickstarter right and they said we're not going to go epic exclusive you're backing us kickstarter they go epic exclusive right like you really don't know what the decision is going to be until the financials for a company works out the financial side, like this mm -hmm. is maybe the better decision, right? I, so you actually have no idea. Depending on the state of Overwatch currently, Overwatch 2 currently, who knows? Maybe there's such an alpha build, they could just easily develop it. Like, who knows what the state of it is, right? Like, how far along they're in to a point where, like, they could easily swap it over to just be an exclusive, being an non-exclusive. Like, we really have no idea about the other cons of it. I, I find it interesting, too, for beyond just the game stuff, but also more in the league, is that... A lot of times, I think a lot of people were thinking like it's a binary choice of like, oh, they're either going to scrap the league or leave it the same or maybe like give it more money. But the re they also run HCS currently. Microsoft is very involved with HCS, which if you don't know, is like the Halo competitive series, which is their new competitive series they partnered with a bunch of orgs with. And they've been running tournaments out of them. They've been working with like Esports Engine to run those. But it yeah, is still yeah. like a semi-franchise league that Halo, that Microsoft themselves are part of. And they brought in assets for the teams and such. So... I wouldn't be surprised either if they do actually care about Overwatch League at all for them to just, instead of, we, the league might, will still exist potentially, but will not be the league that we currently expect it. It could be like, we could go to like an HCS style model where it's like semi-open tournament. Like they could change up how everything works. Like there is no guarantee that the league would even necessarily, if it does exist in the same form, it could entirely I've, change their roots. So I've seen some comments from people saying that they, some people hoping um, that it moves away from the league format and goes to an open format where we have third-party tournaments. I completely disagree with that because you have essentially built the, the foundation of the Overwatch esports ecosystem off of the league format. To, to switch to third-party tournaments requires, a tr not, it requires an immense amount of work and goodwill with outside companies to run your events. And Overwatch burnt that a long time ago. And... The, the game's esports, I don't think, would justify other companies trying to run outside events with, with the viewership that it gets, unless Overwatch 2 absolutely bangs. Like, Well, that, I mean, that would be the reset, right? Is that yeah. you're, it's, they're no longer working with Blizzard anymore. They're working with Microsoft. Like, yeah. it's Microsoft running the show. It's a but new it's game still, coming out. So. It's still Microsoft to the parent company. And when it comes to the budgeting and things and how they work it out, that still goes through Activision Blizzard. Like in terms of how much they they want to allocate, and the same as that, Overwatch League is a pair, is underneath um, Activision Blizzard as a company. Like it, the the way the budgeting works out is all relatively separate. As as somebody who works just has worked inside this ecosystem and like seen on the one hand influencers getting paid and flown out to the grand finals events and on the other hand seeing talent not get flown out that worked the entire season on the grand finals. 
the way that these budgets work, they don't mix sometimes. They just don't mix and they don't cross like that. Like the budgets are decided a long time ago for the set company, for a set purpose. Um, it's So there's, there's a world where, yes, Microsoft acquire it and they are doing these good things with HCS, but that's been a work in progress for a long time. They might, they might come in and, and look at this and yeah. Who knows what, what might end up happening as well. I, I feel like best case scenario is that they, they learn from the lessons of HCS and, and obviously support the Overwatch ecosystem in a, same, in a same and similar way to Halo, which is understanding you know, where it's at and, and building upon it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic, honestly, about the Overwatch League considering this news because, I mean, I don't, I don't know how these mergers kind of works, but I don't think you can just make like major company shifting decisions like during the merger because essentially like Microsoft and Xbox, they come in with the expectation that some things are going to happen. Like Diablo 4 is at some point going to be released. Overwatch 2 is at some point going to be released and as it relates to the overwatch league i don't think <laughs> damn it Costa. i don't think i mean i mean I yeah, think, i'm just saying it's been a while now point, yeah. at some point at some point it's a long time okay i'm just saying yeah. but right, yeah. i don't think i don't think blizzard could just be like uh yeah we're discussing a merger with microsoft and also uh the overwatch league is done and we're cutting it and it doesn't exist anymore because microsoft to some level they probably have expectation that like Overwatch League thing is it, it, it's something we're buying. It's infrastructure we're buying. And like, um, there's a lot of assets there that we, you know, account for valuation of the company. And so mm -hmm. that means that Overwatch League, you know, it's. <laughs> It's gonna happen in 2022. <laughs> it's, 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 I think as well the Overwatch League from. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, sorry. It, continue. It, and it's probably going to happen in 2023, right? Because like, uh, as I just said, like with the acquisition not happening or the merger happening until like mid 2023 that would be like one of those big decisions where it's like we're still you know writing out the details and figuring out the details regarding the merger and then they would um you know change the yeah. overwatch league or like remove the entire ecosystem or do some like a major decision like that during the merger before it is finalized and that's why i don't think it's very likely that the overwatch league would be uh, this would be the last upcoming season for the Overwatch League. So the earliest, this would be like 2024 in my eyes, where it would like make sense for them to make like a big overhaul. Like once the merger is complete, if it happens, um, and there's like half a year, I guess, from like mid-2023 to the end of 2024, where uh, Microsoft could come in and be like, hey, we want uh, like Halo Esports, we want the Overwatch League, or we want whatever. Uh, so that's the first point why I don't see like, Overwatch League changing in the next couple of years. The other point is like, we, we've sort of had like the Black Swan scenario already with the Overwatch League during COVID. Like 2020 was probably as bad as it gets for the Overwatch League. Like yeah. that year was an absolute shit show. We, we were just stuck at home. We had online games and all these teams like- On YouTube. YouTube, yeah, yeah that as well. Hey, man, YouTube, they do some good things. They do some good things, Costa. You know, we can't just... Can't just... They did well, some good things. Like, I'm glad. Yeah, but I'm you should. Right? Yeah. 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 I'm glad. Let's not get into it. That's a show, okay? You know? Um, but I think 2020 was like a really bad year for the league because it really set the league back in many ways. But we survived that to some degrees. Um, I think that if you compare Overwatch League 2018, 2019, like, oh my God, we got a fucking stadium, or not a stadium, like an arena in Burbank, and, you know, we got all this uh, uh, production equipment, we got, like, cameras, we're, like, we're hiring all these freelancers to come in, and are, like, they're, like, camera operators, they, like, take mm -hmm. care of the... Uh, we, we had actually, like, we sold tickets to people who came in there regularly, people working, like, you know, selling drinks and, like, a merch store... Um, and like we they did were that in 2020 as well at the early home stands, but true. But like the point I'm saying is like the budget for those couple of years early on was like massive. Like it, it like it yeah. was way bigger than like 2020 or even like 2021 where we did things online and like most people stay at home and like we got green screens. Like we didn't even have a studio for talent in 2021. And so obviously like the budget and uh, like how much the league costs have like gone drastically down since 2018, 2019 to 2020 and 2021. And so to some degree, I, I think that with the costs minimized so much for online play and 
revenue hopefully kind of you know staying the same i feel like we've kind of had the worst case scenario already with the league god damn it i'm into the matrix um, <laughs> I, yeah and so i I, I feel like sustainably i feel like the overwatch league for uh costs and revenue kind of calculation we're all, we're, we're doing pretty all right i suppose <laughs> so uh, yeah. this was 2021 I don't know. i'm cautious, cautiously optimistic about it God, yeah you can see how depressed i am because i'm just i just didn't shave can you believe that you guys <laughs> aren't in up. the same room together can you even believe we, it? god damn an entire season we just didn't we were literally six feet apart and we could not cast in the same room the entire yeah. season. See, I, from my perspective, 2021 was the worst season that the Overwatch League has been in for a variety of reasons. We lost sponsors. A bunch of other esports were moving to in-person events. Um, and Overwatch League tried to, but obviously prioritizing player health, which is always the right move, I think. They didn't want to run in-person events. But what it left... The kind of feeling I, I felt like was we, we came off the back of the grand finals and all around us were other esports titles that were hosting huge in-person events or just LAN events in general um, around that time. And it, it felt like there was a big, um, a big gap for me. The entire reason we're, we're bringing up this as well, <clears throat> talking about, talking the about the- In the sky. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It looks I like mean, a bunch of just... angels doing a desk in heaven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you died of us and you're here in the overwatch league <laughs> the ladder up to the desk was huge man i'm telling you <laughs> the entire reason we're bringing this up as well is because um it's just been a recent talking point where people are talking about 2022 as the final year to leave because doa posted a tweet about it um i don't know what news or information doa was going off with this but i can only imagine it was something relating to the partnership deals which is the youtube deal was three years and 2022 will be the final year of that YouTube deal. And after that point, it is up in the air in terms of what happens to the future of it. Is there going to be a media rights deal secured? Because at the moment, it doesn't look ideal. Like it's not attractive, I think, to a company to want to um, purchase the Overwatch League currently with the situation that was going on right now with Activision Blizzard. All the sponsors are either, you know, essentially just kind of distancing themselves from Activision Blizzard, or if they are returning, it's because they have some sort of tie to Activision Blizzard, like Coca-Cola, Bobby Kotick's on the board of directors. And it's, it, we're in a weird situation, I think, moving into past 2022. But this is exactly the point I wanted to bounce off of and provide the context for, which is that if there's anything that this Microsoft acquisition does, it's that if they come out and say, we are going to change the culture of this company, it makes it way more attractive for sponsors to return back to Activision Blizzard, including the Overwatch League. It makes it a much more attractive option. It creates more streams of revenue um, back to where it was previously. And there is actually hope for the future moving past 2023, 2024, what you were saying, Johnny, as well. So I just wanted to add a bit of weight to that argument by kind of pointing out why People are so doom and gloom at the moment, but, but I mean, at the end of the day, this deal might do something to offset that. I, I also think it's important as well as like, change is not necessarily bad, right? Like I think, we, remember when the Overwatch League was made, it was built in the understanding that the like homestand model would exist. And I think obviously with COVID has like really like sort of kicked that down and now it's just like bleeding on the floor and it's never really going to get back up but like if you're going into overwatch 2 you have a new parent company if there was ever going to be a time in which you heavily change the format how the league functions then hopefully this would be then because like i don't even know if going back to a homestand model like at least like permanent homestand model like it was envisioned in 2020 is the best thing for the league you know yeah. i think there's so many other esports that are like not just like they're not even doing like independent tournaments like you're just only running out of like dream hacks and stuff like that but having like a circuit like a regional circuit maybe could be good for overwatch especially with how successful it is in multiple regions like china korea europe like north america like overwatch does have good prominence and if overwatch 2 is successful they could easily move into a different direction whether I, or not I think that's possible with the current setup i don't know so, sorry, Costa. I think that's the biggest point you just made there as well. If Overwatch 2 is successful, mm -hmm. because once this merger has been completed in mid-2023, hopefully Overwatch 2 is out. Like, we have <laughs> a better idea, you know? We'd have a better idea of, like, how successful the game is. And at that point, you could make, like, a value-based judgment of, like, how should we invest in Overwatch Esports and what is the best model for the game? So... It depends a lot on how, how successful Overwatch 2 mm -hmm. um, 
would be. So everything is very I mean, contingent that's, that's on that point. Core argument for everything, right? Is how because I mean, I, let's be real. We spent ninety percent of the problems with the ecosystem are based around the game. It's not based around the league. It's the game. Uh, yeah. It's like yeah. where we've. It's just. It's the. It's an issue with the game. The game is just. It's just not a cultural zeitgeist anymore. It doesn't get updates. It doesn't get content. It's been stuck in essentially what appears to be Duke Nukem-esque development hell, though not quite because we still have another like eight years to go before we reach Duke, Duke, Duke Nukem levels. But like, <laughs> it's just like... That is, it's, that's such a reference. I mean, like... Yeah. That's like... I mean, but, you know... A 2010 crazy. reference from gaming history. <laughs> I just, felt, I just like, felt, I just felt like when I'm thinking of development hell, that's like the game. That's yeah, like I mean, it game. hasn't even crossed my mind in eons. I, I think I was playing Modern Warfare 2 when that was a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's about how long it took it to get made, too. Yeah. Eons. So it's like, and that might be Overwatch 2, for all we know. But who knows? Like, Hopefully it, it not. could be a mobile game, because Microsoft specifically stated that a huge person, like you talked about, is getting into the mobile gaming yeah. industry a lot more. Um, we could have Overwatch 2 on mobile. Like, I don't know exactly, like, what's going to be going on there. I also find it interesting when we talk about the League's Health 2, and this is actually one of these uh, monkey's paw wishes, right? It's like, I wish to remove Bobby Kotick. Okay, monkey's paw curls. Bobby Kotick is one of the largest proponents of the Overwatch League within the ecosystem. Goodbye, Bobby Kotick. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, that's the other thing, too. Bob, like, that's what a lot of people don't realize is that Bobby Kotick was kind of the mastermind originally of, like, the idea of the Overwatch League. He was a huge yeah. proponent of pushing it forward in its current franchise league system. He was the one that got all of his rich old buddies to be involved. He was, like, it was Bobby Kotick pushing a lot of this forward. What happens if Bobby Kotick's gone and there's no one there that really wants this to succeed anymore? There's already like three people working on the Overwatch League now. Everyone's <laughs> gone from the league and the behind the scenes. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows that on the public, but I've, there's just an announcements after announcements after announcements. So like, what happens? Like, what goes on if we have a lose a huge person that was in charge of like a lot of money? Yeah, big big question marks I think for the future. Largely though, so what what's the general consensus that everybody's feeling? For me personally, I, I think that. It's largely going to be positive, uh, but but in terms of the topic, how does it affect Overwatch 2 and OWL? I think the Overwatch esports ecosystem is what I'm referring to when I talk about OWL. Even if, like you said, Custer, change happens. Change isn't necessarily bad. It's it's just the way it's done as well. That's 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 how. That's really where I'm left feeling. But Microsoft have been shown in the past to support esports titles, and and I think they treat it as a marketing arm for a lot of their games as well. When when they're kind of thinking about it, so I think it's largely going to be positive. Yeah, I I, I agree with like what Johnny said like uh, about it. Like it's like it really doesn't matter if Overwatch Two isn't a good game. It Overwatch League's on the decline regardless. So like Overwatch Two really needs to breathe new life into whatever the esports is going to look like, regardless of like if it's going to be a league where there's going to be anything. Maybe it's like even um like you know they pull out a lot of like the funding and it becomes an independent thing again. Like if Overwatch Two isn't a great esport, then it doesn't matter. We're on a downwards decline anyway. So it's like it's really about just like hoping that the game is good and that it can keep and that when it does come out, it also just keeps getting balance updates because that's what keeps esports alive is that they just keep releasing content that makes people makes it interesting Games makes it worth watching makes, yeah making it worth playing yeah. and that's what we're missing right now like we haven't had a major update or major pvp change since like a 2020 i believe it was or something like that so we're going like almost 20 months without having anything changed in our game and it's like well of course people are bored and don't like the game almost two years Almost two years hey. since Echo came out. Echo was the last PvP change to be made. Obviously, That's there's been crazy. some very minor balance changes, but no, no drastic changes. Jake is yeah. doing an experimental card. Yeah, that's Jake kind is of doing cool. Jake is doing an experimental card. card. He is. Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. It's so the, 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 the DPS here. The yeah, the I, DPS I mean, I don't think. I, I'm so glad we get to peer into the mechanisms of Jake's mind when it comes to the balance <laughs> of Overwatch, man. This is this is going to be very is about funny. To be Busted. I, yeah. I, I feel like Jake is going to make Doomfist busted. Jake, Jake has got like, some ideas. I, I, I mean, literally, living in the same house as him, many, many a conversation about the balance of Overwatch and... Yeah, the guy's got some, uh, some, I mean, he's, listen, Jake is like, a, he's like an old source head trapped in a young body, you know, because he comes from those source <laughs> games and he's yeah. just got these, he's got these ideas and attitudes that you normally hear from 30 year old quake boomers sometimes. So it's, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting one. He's going to make bunny hop, like a thing, you know, mechanics. Pharaoh's yeah. going to be rocket jumping like in TF2. It's yeah. going to yes. be some <laughs> crazy shit going on there. So yeah, I think I think it's cool. I think overall, 
also my idea of like the league changing is not like very likely because also what do you like if you go back to an endemic roots without doing like a very weird hybrid franchise model how the fuck do you work out with the current teams with like they've created entire separate entities within the organizations like yes the florida mayhem the boston uprising etc the whole point of being in a franchise league model like do you just throw away all your branding and work you put into these 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 actual brands now like no the brands have to like either exist or the league's dead right it's one or the other because you're not going to throw away all the work and money you put into creating these brands um because that would be nonsensical so i do think i do think probably something is going to be it's probably going to be fine like i don't think it'd get worse you know mm -hmm. like i simply don't think it could get worse <laughs> that's, the that's really <laughs> yeah uh, that's that's literally it that's that's what i'm basing off of like the the worst case scenario is the league dies but honestly it could open the way like i'm gonna be honest i don't think the death of the league is a bad thing i'm gonna say it if we go into overwatch 2 and the league's dead and we move to like an endemic model yeah okay sure right like fine like it potentially starts a more sustainable start like it's like and also microsoft could potentially be willing to just be like here's i'm gonna cut you checks team owners i'm just cutting you checks for buying in the overwatch league here you go here's your money back we're just hands off the league's debt right and honestly i don't even hate that i literally don't even hate that i know <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I actually don't like moving to Overwatch too. It's easy to this. say though when <laughs> you're you're you're. But, <laughs> but I mean, but I'm actually saying from a sustainable ecosystem standpoint, we're going into a new game. Microsoft. The biggest complaint here is like, if the league were to die, the team owners would lose. I mean, obviously, there's all, all sorts of other contributing factors, right? But mm -hmm. if Overwatch esports just continues to exist, there's still going to be work for people that work in Overwatch esports. And the team owners then could get their money back for the league because Microsoft, like, what is fucking, what's $20 million for a couple teams for Microsoft? That's why, why would they give them their money back? Yeah, surely there's like an expiry date, like not like as much of like a, I'm just, on this date, I, your money is useless, but like surely there's like a contractual end to where like at some point it's like, it's reasonable for the league to just sort of like non-exist anymore. Yeah, and I mean, the investment is possible. a loss, right? That's yeah. also like, possible. But I'm just saying like, I'm, I'm simply saying the fact that I don't think like the death of the league it, heading to overwatch 2 is necessarily the worst thing ever in the world because you could always what better time to restart the system than at the start of overwatch 2 yeah sure. i i would so just i actually agree with you but it's now the time like the, now i think is the suboptimal time to just i'm not but i'm not talking about for 2022 it's obviously everything not that overwatch esports is about though. it's just like you know, it would have been the worst thing. Like, we're, we're, we're in sort of a tumultuous time within the company and Overwatch itself with Overwatch 2 on the horizon that now, or I, I don't... I don't, I don't think it's going to happen now. I don't think it's going to happen in this upcoming year, though. Yeah. It's, it's the, the gear's already in motion for 2022. You can't stop yeah. 2022. That's going to happen. I'm simply talking beyond 2022. Yeah, like, I agree. Because we don't even know if we're going to have Overwatch 2 for 2022. We don't even know. <laughs> yeah. so I mean, they it said doesn't... it's going to be on Overwatch 2. So they it's said gonna be, so. <laughs> it's going to be well, in some I mean, way or form. If it's not, I mean, it's it, it's done. It, I'm, it could be over. It's over, yeah, yeah. It's like, done. I'm, I'm, I'm moving to, I don't know, Indonesia. I'm becoming a surf instructor. <laughs> the plan that I enacted years ago is in motion, <laughs> if that's the SCA case. SCA Dora 2 caster, Brent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The, um, um, I, yeah, I, like I just wanted to like jump because like if Overwatch Two comes out, there's never a better time to do a massive format change than when like for Overwatch Two comes out. You know, like because everyone's used to the current format for where we are in Overwatch One, and I agree, you can't change it right now. Like that doesn't make sense. But with a massive launch of Overwatch Two, massive company change, I think that is the best time to do these like long sweeping like strokes and like just being like, I right, we're just gonna get rid of the entire idea of like home based franchise and we're going to go back to like a more regional model that is like sustainable and doesn't have to deal with like on you know, a global travel as much as things and there's like i think we can all agree the current system that the league is working where you have an international worldwide league is unsustainable in long term and there's going to be so many issues and hiccups that come across the way you're better off doing it like it does you know in league of legends and you know valorant where they you play within your region for a long time and then you travel multiple times yeah, a year like and that's one, it technically one that is what one, our two, system three is events. yeah Isn't but technically what our system is is the league system right now in fact i think this is the better of the system is essentially we've regionalized it currently it's just we don't have enough teams in asia that's yeah, the biggest and, problem we but just that's don't what i'm saying in europe 
you you put more money because like already like the the korean contender scene that does really well like they function on their own same with chinese like you you can make it work quite easily and put more resources into that and then sort of build up those regions because right now the league is very um i guess north american orientated like with like how it's all built and like run so it's like i think you could easily make something like that's better because i think right now the franchising model has proven in the last four years we've been through so many iterations of what it could be as much as I think this right now is, you know, going into 2022, what we did in 2021 is the best idea for it. It's like, is that perfect? I don't think so. I, don't I think it's pretty dysfunctional because yeah, of COVID. I agree. And the, it, like, I, I get, I, I don't even like the regionalizing. Like, I, I think it's half assing like a kind of uh, ecosystem, um, and it's not perfect as the best. Or because I said, like, I, I, I think we still we're still an iteration away of the best way the league could operate, but we're probably need to get rid of COVID. Um, and, you know, who knows when that's going to be before that actually happens. So we're, we're in a bit of a there. tough spot as it stands already. Um, wrapping this up, I guess, I'll try to be brief here, but I'm, I'm cautious, cautiously optimistic about this because I don't think there's going to be any big meaningful, meaningful change for the next two years while this merger is processing because I don't, you know, 2022 is probably going to go through with it. 2023, I don't think they're going to make any big uh, overarching changes to the Overwatch esports ecosystem uh, when the merger is being finalized by, you know, quarter one, quarter two of next year. So I don't think, you know, there's going to be, be any big meaningful change by then. I think Microsoft and Xbox, if they were like to be asked by Blizzard, like, hey, what do you want to do with the Overwatch League? They'd probably be like, well, let's finalize the merger, then have our guys look at it and then maybe change things for 2024. And by then, um, we would have way more info about Overwatch 2. Hopefully, it's released by then. Uh, <laughs> I like how 2024. So, that that is knocking on wood at this point. So just like, like 2024, come on. We know. <laughs> Look, I'm not taking anything for granted anymore, I've asked. But I'm just saying we'll have so much more info by the time the merger finalizes, if it does, that I think at that point, you know, we'll have a better idea of what to do with the Overwatch League. And this is not what I want to happen. This is what I think will happen. So I think... The next two years will probably be pretty static. Not a lot will change um, internally. And then we'll figure out if the merger is complete, what um, Xbox and Microsoft wants to do with Overwatch. Mm -hmm. Well, fingers crossed for a, a hopeful, whimsical future for all of us involving Overwatch. A future where Overwatch <laughs> is out in 2022. Huh? I don't really want whimsical, Ren. I just, I the just... world needs whimsy. The world does need whimsy, yeah. We all need to be a bit more whimsical, I think. Getting That's too the Overwatch 2 tagline when it releases in 2025. <laughs> the world needs whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully hopefully it's going to be a positive um, change overall. Or, but we'll see. I mean, it's, it's early days yet. Um, let's move on. The final topic of this emergency episode. It's not quite an emergency episode because we recorded it four days later, but it's Brent's Player of the Week. <laughs> this, this, is a, this is a very special Brent's Player of the Week. It's, uh, it's going to be awarded to, to someone who passed away uh, recently, and it is going to go to... I need to pull it up on my phone as well, Kurt, or you can, or you can pull it up yourself as well. Um, as well, the Brands Player of the Week this week is going to Magawa the Land Sniffing Hero Rat, died at aged eight. Um, rest in peace, Magawa. Uh, this is a rat that was trained to sniff landmines and was one of the best rats that has ever been trained at detecting landmines. And they saved countless amounts of lives and uh, prevented countless amounts of tragedies as well. Um, the, you know, the rat passed away peacefully, but it sniffed out over a hundred landmines and other explosives in Cambodia. And, the, and the, the way it works is the rats are trained on it. Rats are quite intelligent creatures as well. And they're light enough that they can walk onto the landmines and they won't detonate them. And they found countless and countless amounts of them. But uh, yeah, unfortunately passed away, but the legacy will live on with countless lives saved. So that's my player of the week this week. Magawa, the landmine sniffing rat. That is uh, also, I do love that they gave a scale mod, like, like metal yeah. for the rat. Scale like, to the rat. It was scaled down yep. for the rat. <laughs> like that's pretty good. That's pretty. That's a very. You know what? I'm, I'm cool with the player of the week. I think it's. Thank a, you. I think it's a. Yeah. How yeah. long do rats normally live for? Is eight a long time? I think so. Like, I mean, it is. Yeah, Magawa had quite long an active life. Rats. You know, a yeah. Around. I mean, also Magawa is in a high rice. risk field of work for a rat. Too. Exactly. Like yeah. that's. A, I mean, there's not very many rats doing that. What? Business, Brown so. rat, two years. Black rat, twelve months. 
Holy shit, Magawa! This guy was a big Magawa, what type of rock was this? I think Magawa was a... The Eternals of rats. Magawa was a rat. Pets rats, they lived six to seven years. Okay. That's crazy. What? I think Magawa was a... It was a different breed of rat. The African giant pouch rat. African... Just giant like a small kangaroo pouched rat. What but, is the lifespan of these animals? So well, I mean, you could argue. Uh, well, technically, kangaroos are marsupials, though, not rats, right? What's so. a marsupial? It's so a giant, giant. Uh, wait, I'm looking at something completely <laughs> different. Uh, apparently, it's around seven years. So that's did exceed the, yeah. the the average yeah, lifespan, you, you know. Yeah, I mean, this thing was like, it, that's why it was so good. It just had a ridiculous amount of knowledge. It had more experience than every other rat in the field. This yeah. is who you call. The oldest call rat Magawa. ever was named Rodney and lived past seven years old. The oldest rat ever on record was a pet named Rodney who lived seven years and four months. Do you know what's but crazy? Magawa, just world records. As well, the date. Is that, did you know that rats are far cheaper to train than mind-detecting dogs? A rat requires $7,300 for nine months of training, whereas a dog costs about twenty-five thousand dollars. Well, I mean, I would imagine a rat also just eats less food. Yeah, that'll do it. That would yeah. probably eats less food, us. but also, you know, their, their, their noses are highly developed. They have a very good sense of smell. So we're all learning something today. But yeah, that's going to wrap the episode up. Thanks for watching Plachat Overwatch episode one hundred twenty-one. Um, leave a comment for what your favorite marsupial fact is, and uh, I'll be sure to uh, read a lot of them and intake the knowledge into my head, and it'll, it'll probably have like a, a half-life of about a year in my brain before it leaves for more information. But yeah, follow the Twitter as well. Thank you, uh, Custer, for joining us as well on this episode as well, because uh, obviously, you know, Josh is off meeting the Queen and stuff, I think. I don't really know what he's doing. He's in the UK doing something else. But yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you... What, what's the next thing we're doing? We're doing a, is it a Flex Support episode? Yeah. Flex, the, yes. fl the top 10 flex supports we'll be doing. Cast it into someone's list again. Cast it could be on that list. could be making two lists. Two lists. I know you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll catch you then. Peace.